Welcome to another exciting episode of Perpetually Ajar. I am one of your hosts, Katie Johnson, and for Kruby Productions, I play Weishni, Penny Peladonut, Cinderfall, and Velvet the Chocolate Rabbit, and I also am a producer, and I am a writer, and I do a lot of really cool stuff on the show, and I don't know what that accent was. Hooray! <laughs> and yeah, I also am a lovely host on this amazing podcast that we want to bring to you, hooray, joy, and I also have my awesome co-host! Hey, everybody, it's Bo. Um, I voice Winter and Ilya for Ruby Bridge slash Kruby Productions. I'm the lead director of the VR short department. Uh, I'm, uh, what else do I do? Oh, one of the lead writers, and, um, uh, I'm, other than, man, Bo, you are just on a roll today, um, <laughs> <laughs> other than hosting this lovely podcast, I am also one of the, the members, or, like, hosts, technically. We don't really use hosts on Kirby Talk, but, yeah, yeah, I'm also on the other podcast that we have where we talk about Ruby when it's on, you know, on air and then other anime series when it's not airing. And, yeah, that's what I do. You guys should Yay. know who I am. If you're, if you're listening to this episode, this is like season two, episode like nine or ten. Like, you yeah, know like we we're are. up here. We're getting it. <laughs> and, oh, my gosh, today is for the first time in like eight weeks, we don't have a special guest. It's just us. It has been a hot minute, Katie. Like, and you and Yo. I have been, like, we've both been like super busy with stuff. So we really haven't had a yeah. chance to chat a whole lot recently. Yeah, honestly, like right before we recorded, we were uh, just having like a little conversation about toilet paper and, uh, uh, and some bidets. genius, <laughs> some mad scientist idea that I came up with that I will share with you all soon. <laughs> oh, no. And... <laughs> Oh, yes. So we were just catching up before we started. And like, it's nice to kind of get back into the flow of things because recording podcasts is one of the things that I really enjoy because it just gives you a time to like forget about the world, but also remember the world because you have to talk about it. But oh, yeah. like you just get to be in this moment and mm -hmm. and talk about fun stuff and share it with all of our beautiful audience. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, Bo, what have you been up to? Like, I mean, we did record an episode recently with uh, Melissa Sternenberg, if you have not checked that one out. Mm -hmm. So you can listen to that pure audience if you'd like to hear what we were up to two weeks ago. But but like what else is happening right now? Um, well, I'm still on my tangled bullshit. So there's that. Of course. <laughs> my profile picture <laughs> is shocked Cassandra. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I've really been I've really been trying to take my my streaming a lot more seriously. And yeah. so I've been, you know, putting it, like at least a solid hour to an hour and a half of like prep work before I go into streaming. And yeah. then I've also been doing like an hour or so of like post stream work where I go back through, I, I clip my favorite moments because I have I have a thing called a stream deck. And so when something funny happens, I just push a button and it puts a little highlighter for me so that, that yeah. way I can go back and be like, oh, something happened here, something happened here, you know, and um, I go back and I clip everything that isn't clipped by people that are watching. And yeah. I've just been, I've really been, I mean, there's not much else to do right now, given, you know, circumstances in the world. So mm -hmm. I've kind of been really taking that seriously. And it's been a lot of fun. I've been really enjoying, like, kind of almost feeling like, wow, this actually feels like a job, but in a good way, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so like it's part of like a routine. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And, you know, I actually, you know, set up a schedule for when I'm streaming, like consistent times. I've started hosting a movie night in my discord server. So that's cool. Um, I was like, it's not just ex exclusively Disney movies, but then every week everyone votes for Disney movies. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it was like we did Frozen, and then we did uh, Coco, and then it's looking like Atlantis is going to be the next one. So it's just oh all- Oh my gosh, all, this is awesome. All, yeah, all Disney stuff. And then after streaming, I uh, recently started working. I went back into writing fan fiction. Uh, big oh, surprise. Oh yeah, you told me. Yeah, big surprise, Cassunzel, Cassandra Rapunzel from Tangled. <laughs> Uh, with a little bit of Frozen dabbled in, and uh, it's called Deer Wraps, and I'm really proud of it so far. What have you been up to, Katie? That is awesome. Oh my gosh. So so as all of you know, the quarantine is happening right now, so mm -hmm. we have to be indoors. And usually like on weekends or whatever, I I like to get out a little bit, but during the week I pretty much stay isolated and already, so my lifestyle hasn't changed too much. I'm very fortunate that I'm able to sort of do that, but... um. 
Yeah, I have been in love with Animal Crossing. You know, this like little indie <laughs> game that no one's heard of called Animal Crossing. What Animal that, Crossing? Um, what could that possibly be about? Yeah, you know how I was like obsessed with Stardew Valley for a while? Well, uh-huh. Stardew Valley is basically in a dumpster behind a Wendy's right now because oh, I am, I have married and committed to fucking Animal Crossing. We are in it for the long haul. Every day I'm giving everything I have to Animal Crossing when I'm not doing something else, which I'm not usually doing something else because I'm usually like, well, back to Animal Crossing. You know, I was listening to I was listening to a friend of mine play Animal Crossing the other day. And Mm -hmm. she was uh, she her sister had just gotten it earlier in the day. Yeah. And um, her sister just does not understand the mechanics of it or anything like that. And so she was oh, like, yeah. where the bitch thinks she going? No, don't pick that up. No, that's mine. Don't take that. Like, oh, <laughs> and God. she was just like, stop it. <laughs> She's like, oh and, then, and then at one point she was like, oh, hold on. Let me, I have, I got a message from someone. So she like looked away from the game and then she was like, where'd she go? Like, and she's like, I've checked the entire island. Where did my sister go? <laughs> Oh my god, yes. <laughs> so it's just, it's really funny. Like, I genuinely don't, I don't play the game. I'm not familiar with it. But yeah, it's yeah. been really funny. It's been kind of like, you know, the meme where it's like, hey, someone who's not in the Animal Crossing game, explain what's going on here. You know, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. kind of me. And I'm endless amounts of entertainment. People dying from tarantulas and shit. Yes. <laughs> it's very wholesome and it's very fun. And I think it came at the perfect time because now that everyone's kind of stuck in their house, it gives you kind of a little world to go to. And I'm, for the first time, using online mode. So I have friends that I can, like, travel to see their village, whether they live in California to New York. Like, mm-hmm. we can hang out in Animal Crossing. And I've never done that before, like, with online play. And and um, it's, it's really cool, like, yeah. getting to do that and see all the memes and see everyone come together. And I just saw that Animal Crossing, in its first week of sales, has already beat out, like... I can't remember the names of the games, but they're like the really big games. Mm. And uh, I'd have to I'd have to relook it up because I don't remember where I saw it. But Animal Crossing is selling like hotcakes like it is fucking huge. And yeah. that makes me very happy because I loved it. And then, of course, I'm um, listening to The Unexpectables every week, the D&D podcast I love. And Critical Role is on a temporary hiatus because they don't want to gather in the um, in the main. Yeah, in the studio. Place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're still making some like some content, but I'm just like, you know what? I'm just I'm just gonna vibe and wait till you get back to like the the show, and I'm just gonna yeah. use that time to like watch anime with some friendos and stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm I've um, actually done like a Discord hangout with uh, some of my other uh, friends. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but I host a podcast with someone named Jack Split, mm-hmm. and uh, we have a little Discord server where it's me, him, and Saber, and Paleo, and Hero, and we um, <laughs> we've been watching Ducktales together. Oh my god! Talk the... about a throwback. Yeah, no, but the newest. Yeah, uh, the but 2017 I mean, still, like Ducktales. Like, come on. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's it's awesome, and uh, I I've completely caught up. And on April 2nd or 1st, I think, Mm -hmm. is going to be the season three premiere of the 2017 series. So, like, they helped me all the way catch up and we've just been having a blast watching it and making jokes. And now we're going to get to watch the newest season together. So I highly recommend out there anybody that just wants to, like, start a fun show or if you have a friend that likes a show and you're just like, "Ah, I don't know if that's 100 percent for me, but it sounds interesting. Just sit down and watch a few episodes with a friend because it's like such a fun experience, like mm-hmm. just watching shows with people and getting to talk about it. Yeah. And it's just, uh, yeah. Star messaged me the other day and was just like, so you've seen the Tangled series. I'm not don't even answer like you've are. I know you've seen it, but like I need to talk <laughs> about this. I just finished the first season and I'm like, oh, man, rubs hands together. Oh, Let's boy. go. <laughs> and it's really cool, too, because it's like. Most of my friends that I've been watching the show with or that I you know, yeah. kind of watched the show with my, my first time, really, a lot of us had kind of already been spoiled on a lot of things um, yeah. just through Tumblr and whatnot because it was massive on Tumblr, had a huge following on Tumblr, despite the fact that the advertisement mm-hmm. was really lackluster for the show itself. Um, yeah. But uh, I had seen a lot of gift sets and whatnot uh, from the show. And so Star, mm. though... 
knows nothing. She somehow managed to like completely avoid spoilers and has no idea the shit that's coming up. So I'm like, oh, yay. Star, we need to watch it. And so we've been watching season two and whatnot. And I'm supposed oh. to watch a little bit more with her today, I think. Um, that's so awesome. So it's been really cool to kind of re experience the show kind of live vicariously through her almost because I didn't get to watch it with that fresh mind of like, oh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And so I'm kind of more watching her than watching the show because it's just like, how's she going to react to this? (laughs) Yeah, that's how it it's been for DuckTales because they have already seen all of, of course, DuckTales and I had not seen any of the newest one and I've only seen a little bit of the old one. So watching it has just been fun where something would happen and I would be like, oh my God. And they'd be like, yeah, bitch, we knew you'd love that scene. And I was like, <laughs> oh, and it's just, yeah, That's it, great. it reminds me of when, um, when My Little Pony was happening. I was not like a, a big My Little Pony fan. I hadn't really watched it, all that good stuff. But like, but Jordan was, uh, really involved in the brony community along with like Saber and them uh, back in the day and I guess a little bit now and so when My Little Pony was like about to officially end end they were just like Katie you have to watch all of My Little Pony and I was like fuck all right I'm in and for two months we would just all watch it together and it, and they would like know all the songs and like it was so fun getting to watch it with them and then when I finally caught up I was like all right I'm I'm a pony person now, and I went to BronyCon with them, and I told that story on the podcast about going to BronyCon, and it was mm-hmm. like I remember that honestly, if I could time travel, like to a time in my life where I had just the most fun, I would go back to BronyCon because it felt like a summer camp with all of my best friends. Like, because I had never been in the pony community, I'd never done anything there. Like, I never, I didn't know anything about it. I honestly didn't know what to expect at that con, mm-hmm. and just, but just being there with Jordan and all my friends that I'd become so close to, watching the show just for two months and them being so passionate and sharing that with me and getting to see them do their panels and be in this community was so beautiful and like and we had a really a nice suite that we were all staying in so it was like a big fucking sleepover for like five days Mm -hmm. and like we would just watch anime and play video games and watch youtube videos and like they all get my sense of humor and like i just it was like i can't believe i'm saying this but brony con was one of the best things I've ever experienced in my life no that's great I miss it like I wish I could just go back in time and do that con again with all of them because it's the people that make things so wonderful and the quarantine right now is I'm a very extroverted person I live online you know a lot but it's just like there's something about when you're at these events that just brings you closer to what it means to like like if I if I was ever like some hippie person like which I guess I maybe am I don't know but like (laughs) conventions are where like the magic of the universe come collides because like you're with people that that you get and like they get you yeah and that, like you know yeah. the interesting thing is that um because i've been going to conventions for years now but the first convention that i ever really felt like that for was clexicon um back in 2018 yeah. i went to clexicon in las vegas and it was specifically a convention that celebrated positive representation of queer women in modern media oh i um, want to go to that that sounds awesome yeah and it had not just not just like actresses that play queer characters or queer actresses that are like out and whatnot but like you know queer female writers and you know trans female writers and producers and showrunners and just it really was just this beautiful convention and you know and the best thing about it is that the fact that it was it was obviously geared towards women of all walks of life but there were so many like by women that brought like their husbands and you know normally i would be like oh Mm -hmm. god they're gonna get shit for it but every single like couple that i met and talked to that weekend was just like you know we were really concerned because like even at pride parades people are really rude to people who are bi because it's kind of for whatever reason it's just super yeah super toxic towards bisexual people yeah but I think it's called like bi bi erasure yeah bi bi erasure -erasure. you know people are just really rude towards them and but at this convention everyone was just super warm and welcoming and it was the first time that I'd ever really like sat back and looked at you know where I was and been like I feel like I'm surrounded by people of like minds you know like I feel like I'm surrounded by people who get me you know yeah 
And that was the first time that I'd really ever experienced that. So that was really cool. It's it's a really surreal experience when you have that moment of like, this is this is it. This is where I want to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And I'm just uh, and I can't wait for conventions to, you know, come back because for good reason, a lot of them are being kind of postponed or some canceled right now. And it's a scary time for smaller cons that are kind of dealing with situations where they have to kind of play chicken with the government and make the government shut the con down or else they lose all their money and then they won't have funding for to exist anymore. Yeah. And it's it's very stressful for those cons. But fortunately, a lot of the cons that I go to that I very much am like in love with, like Momocon and um, RTX, I don't have to worry about them having to shut down if they had to skip a year. I know that Momocon's already postponed and mm-hmm. I'm a little sad. RTX, we're still waiting to hear if they're going to fully do whatever. Yeah. So I'm 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 nervous, but because it's in July, I'm more hopeful. I'm but, I'm hopeful, yeah. but I'm also not holding my breath. Like, yeah, just it's it worst just case really postpone, huh? Worst case, they would postpone. Yeah, worst case, they would postpone. And knowing knowing Rooster Teeth, you know, they would they would they would absolutely you know transfer your badge and whatnot if you had your your badge purchased. Like that yeah, would just be yeah. really poor business not to. Um, because people, you know, people spend so much money to come out there, and then luckily, if, yeah. if it's a, if it's early enough, you'd be able to transfer your flight, which is what I did for Planet. You know, Planet yeah. unfortunately got canceled for us, and so I was able to transfer that and get my my flight for Dragon Con actually. So oh, nice. Yeah, okay. I paid like a whole dollar and eighty six cents or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So that was that was cool, but yeah, yeah, it's been. It's been a really it's been yeah like <laughs> stressful strenuous time but you know you just got to keep moving forward. Yeah, and I hope that you're all out there staying safe, washing your hands, staying in if you can, but if you're like a a worker, I think it's deemed like a necessary worker or a essential um, worker, yeah. Essential. Yeah, essential worker, you know, doing what you have to do. You are so brave and we can't thank you enough for what you're doing and I hope that I really do hope when this is over that you're going to continue to receive the respect that you deserve, hopefully the pay that you deserve, mm-hmm. and that right now any help that you need to survive is going to be given to you. And I, I'm just like keeping up as much as I can, you know, politically with what's going on right now and also just nationwide health wise what's going on right now because it's so important to be informed if you can. But it's also important to step away and just be like, hey, I've done my I've done my bit of like researching for the day, but like if if all that you do is just read and read and read about the horrors of what's going on right now, it's going to drain you and it's not going to be productive. You can only it's good to take in the information that you need to take in. It's good to stay informed, but you also have to step away from your mental health and just yeah. be able to look at something else. And we hope that maybe this podcast can be one of those things that helps kind of during this time entertainment and Social distancing does not mean emotional distancing. So please reach out to friends, still talk online, use online sources absolutely, and, and things to stay connected with people because we can't isolate ourselves completely. Watch things that you enjoy. Do things that make you happy. But just be conscious and just don't go outside, I guess, unless you're just going for a walk and you don't have any like people around you. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Uh, I was I was thinking about it earlier and... It's just really funny because we've talked about how I'm I'm an introvert and mm-hmm. I saw a post on Tumblr and it's so true is like, you know that you're an introvert when the whole damn world goes on lockdown and your lifestyle doesn't change whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I also saw a post and um, it was it was from another introvert and they were like, you know, I preferred having the option to turn down plans. <laughs> Yeah. Instead of just not having plans at all, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's and I was just, just like, like oof. <laughs> there was one where it was like, um, it was like when when all the plan when all the events that you already weren't going to keep getting canceled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> you know, you just gotta I mean, you know, it's it's a serious situation that we're in, but yeah, you, you gotta you know, if if all you ever do is look for the darkness, that's all you're ever gonna find. Like you gotta find yeah. some humor in things. You gotta you gotta look for the light because it's just uh, you know, and 
Katie and I here, you know, we're we're recording this episode a little bit later than we normally do because yeah. I, I had to take a couple mental health days. Like I genuinely wasn't yeah. doing super well, and I try to be really open about that, and you know, like not not necessarily just keep that behind closed doors. Obviously, I'm not gonna like share details, but. Yeah, I just I, I I like to be honest with you guys and with you know whoever asks is you know sometimes it, it's okay to not be okay but you know reaching out to people and you know Katie and I uh, yesterday was it um, yeah we we just kind of hopped in a call and just chatted for a little bit and it was it was really nice like yeah you know it was it was the first time that we had really talked at all in a few weeks. And <laughs> yeah. it was just it was it was nice catching up and it was it really did kind of set me back on the on the right track towards being able to record today. So thank you, Katie, for doing that. You're welcome. And speaking of uh dark things, there's okay guys, there's an idea that I have to show I have to I have oh, to tell no. you all about. Okay. Oh no. So you know how there's a toilet paper shortage? <laughs> Everybody, shut the fuck up. This is Katie's soapbox time. <laughs> No. There's a short toilet paper shortage, okay? And everyone is like, oh, we need to invest in bidets. Well, listen, everybody. Bidets are like they shoot water at your booty, but there's not a way to dry your booty afterwards. So you're going to need paper towels or toilet paper anyway, or else you're going to have swamp ass. And let's be real. Nobody wants swamp ass. So here is the ultimate solution and because without my product, your bidet is useless. Your bidet is dumb and stupid and wrong because it just gives you swamp ass. But with my invention, the butthole blow dryer, you too can have a bidet and not have swamp ass. And here's how it works. Google the world's tiniest blow dryer. Google it right now. It exists. It's super tiny. <laughs> it charges on your computer. It has a USB charger. <laughs> and... You can just take it with you everywhere and turn it on, turn it off, and it just blows a little bit of air, and you could put that on your butt. I, I'm <laughs> and just you could, shaking and you never my have head. to use toilet paper. I've been again. shaking my head and, for the last like 30 seconds while she's been talking. And you're welcome, world. You're welcome. Patent it now. The butt blow dryer for your bidet. And I'm going to be tweeting about this later. So you're all going to see it, and oh, it's going to no. be great. <laughs> No. And yes, that is uh comment leave in the comments if you would use a butt blow dryer. <laughs> Katie is an absolute problem. This is what happens when we have an episode where it's just me and you. I just lower the barrier and I'm just like, what what's the dumbest shit I can talk about? Oh, God. And here I'm like, we're like talking about like really profound things, and then it's just like, hey guys, have you heard about my butthole blow dryer? <laughs> Shut up. It's a great idea and everyone loves it. And everyone's going to buy one. <laughs> buy oh, one right no. now for your your butt today. It'll be great. No. Don't. Actually, though, real talk, I have two friends that got bidets when all the uh, toilet paper stuff was happening. And I've never used a bidet because I've never been somewhere where they had them. Um, but I've always wanted to try it. But I actually thought that it already came with, like, something to dry your butt off because I was like, that would be dumb if it didn't. Lo and behold, it didn't. And that's dumb <laughs> because you're already going to need to dry your butt or you're just going to sit there wasting time. And so I was like, I don't like, necessarily I have the think solution. that bidets are supposed to be complete like changes from like you're not supposed to use toilet paper at all i think it's mm. because apparently like the the pitches that i've always seen is that it it gets it gets it cleaner than just straight up wiping wood and then mm. you would use like less toilet paper to just like pat yourself dry Oh, I think I think it was it's supposed sense. to be like an accompany accompanying item rather than a full oh. replacement. And I think people well. I have a feeling people <laughs> might not have put enough thought into it. <laughs> mm. So. OK. Yeah. Well, it's my well I like my idea to get rid of the paper part altogether. It's it's economically sound. It's good for the environment. It's going to be great. And uh, buy one today <laughs> and let me know how it goes because <laughs> I haven't done it yet. <laughs> I might just buy that tiny blow dryer, though, just to have it and see what happens. And like next time I'm around a bidet, be like, all right, Katie. Now is your time to shine. This. Now is my time and I'll tweet about it. Just, just follow me on Twitter. And if I ever do shit like this, 
Twitter will know. Wow, Katie. I will not. Save, save the self-promos to the end. God. Listen, you plugged your stream. I'm going to plug my I, butt blow dryer. Oh, my God. I never <laughs> said follow me. Like... <laughs> Follow Bo and follow my butt blow dryer. Brian, can you like boost my voice for like, comment, subscribe? <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> you add like an echo to it or some shit? <laughs> echo, echo, echo. He's probably not going to do it. And then I'm going to sound know, like an idiot, but it's okay. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be fine. <laughs> well, all right. Guys, for the first time in quite a few weeks, let's get to our no. um, Kruby News Corner. <laughs> no. <laughs> I quit. We we actually have an update that's amazing, Bo, if you would like to take it away. Uh, hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Bo here. <laughs> As if I <laughs> went anywhere. Um, so, the time has come. Katie, ask me what time is it? What time is it, Bo? Well, it's actually 9.03 a.m., but... Oh, nice. um, <laughs> <laughs> Nondescript Winter Holiday 2 is 100% done. Complete. <laughs> Finito. Dunzo. <laughs> we are washing our hands of it and never touching it again. <laughs> I'm clapping. I'm clapping right now. Uh, <laughs> as of right this moment when we're recording on the 26th, it is available for all tiers on Patreon, not just the $25 tier because it is so late we decided to make it available to everyone on our Patreon. So even the $1 tier, the swear jar and all that, you guys can all have access to it right now. However, by the time this episode comes out, it will already be public on the YouTube. So um, I want to just go ahead and uh, Katie... What was one of your favorite things real fast about writing it? Because this this short took so long and we never really got to yeah. talk about it. So I want to take this moment to talk about it right now real fast. You know what? Yeah, yeah. So I guess we can talk about all the plot points now. We can like kind of go in a little bit. Um, yeah. And I'll, I'll, this... finish, I'll do the rest of the update after it. This is all part of the update. Yeah. yeah. So this short was – it was – it was a journey to get to the point where we knew what characters we were using and what story we wanted to tell. But Pira and Sender were kind of the focus and we wanted to kind of have the juxtaposition there. And I think one of my favorite, absolute favorite parts to write was actually the very final scene with Pira and Jean. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't watched it yet, please go watch it. So I won't spoil in mass detail, mm -hmm. but um, it was a very lovely scene and I really enjoyed kind of molding that dialogue there and making that beautiful tender moment and then of course all the cinder burns mm -hmm. and just and the first few writing sessions with just when it was just me and you and we were just kind of going back and forth and like getting pen to paper that was honestly the the fun the funnest part because that's kind of when the magic is happening the editing is like it's fun cuz you get to kind of like you kind of get to mold it even more mm -hmm. with what you already have. But I really love the creative time where you're just getting to come up with whatever you want because we are in a position where we have the models, we have the space, we can make it sort of whatever we want. It's kind of almost as freeing as having original animation, mm -hmm. except, you know, there's some limitations, but but we can kind of create these scenes and do it kind of from scratch. And that was so so beautiful that we got that freedom and yeah I definitely think that was the Jean and Pira scene was my favorite scene to write yeah this was I think I think I agree um I remember before we got to that point when we were going to be writing like I think it was like later that night I went on YouTube and watched like a whole bunch of compilations of like the Arco scenes and just kind of how they really interacted with each other because I wanted to make mm -hmm. sure that it felt that it flowed and felt like how they talked in the show, you know? Yeah. And, and you kind of spearheaded the the middle scene with uh with like the shenanigans with um with Lyren and everybody, mm -hmm. like the a going lot of back the, and a forth. A lot of the shenanigans, the the banter and whatnot. I was kinda like yeah. you know, it's comedy is so hard for me to write. And actually, um, and I haven't mentioned this to you, Katie, is uh the the Tangled series really kind of hooked me on writing comedy 
Um, yeah, yeah. And so I've been because it has like the level of comedy that I, I really enjoy. It's not like super crazy over the top. It does have its moments, but it's kind of the mm-hmm. same level of comedy that I would like to bring to the VR shorts. So yeah. I'm definitely a lot more receptive to the idea of having more humorous VR shorts now than I was. I was I admit I was being obstinate about that. But yeah, yeah, I think I think from start to finish, the Arco scene is also my favorite thing of like it was it was such a great thing to write. It was such a great thing to hear the radio play, you know, hear Cole and hear Star and then getting to to mocap and ending up being both Jean and Pira for mocapping. Yep. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I got to be got to be all up in my own business, apparently. <laughs> yeah but uh and then you know seeing the final product and you haven't seen the final product yet huh i haven't so i'm excited to watch it yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be good i'm really i'm really happy with that but um yeah we we are releasing it on friday yes it'll be i mean that's not public knowledge when we're recording this but when this is out it'll already be out so yeah it's, it's coming out it's coming out um T- tomorrow right because today's thursday right yeah oh god you're right yeah tomorrow wow <laughs> everybody whoa <laughs> yeah it's happening it's- oh my god so much is actually by the time you hear this too steven universe is ending tomorrow and i just wanted to pay my respects right now F in chat because- for steven universe <laughs> because i am going to be watching that premiere tomorrow and i'm going to be bawling my eyes out because i love steven universe so next time we record will be a new Katie that doesn't have Steven Universe anymore. And I just wanted to say that. Yeah. But um <laughs> but yeah, anyways, short is, uh, yes. <laughs> going going back to the Kirby News Corner. Um okay, yeah. kind of uh spinning off of the nondescript winter holiday too, the video team is hard at work on several new forms of content to so um make sure to keep an eye out for when those videos release. Uh among those things is the kind of still semi new ruby goofs or random ruby goofs i think is what they're actually called um yeah yeah we've had the the newest ruby goofs i think it's ruby goofs 2 up on our patreon for a little bit um when this episode comes out it should be coming out this friday as in um friday after the 31st um Mm -hmm. so keep an eye out on the channel for that it's it's really funny it's got it's got some really, really great moments. I do, I do really enjoy the random Ruby goofs. Um, Ruby abridged is almost done. Like <laughs> when I say almost, it's like it's like how nondescript has been for a while. But it's there. <laughs> so months. It's so it's so damn close, guys. Like I'm so excited. I haven't seen anything from it really. Uh, so I'm really excited to see. I, I always kind of eagerly await for our own abridged episodes because I'm not I'm not nearly as involved in that as I am with some of the other content that we have. So mm-hmm. I kind of just sit back and and look forward to it like the rest of you guys. So really excited for you guys to check that out. And all of this content, this awesome content that we've been spending months and months and months working on, is available early access on our Patreon. So, you know, money yes. money is really tight right now, guys, and we completely understand. And first and foremost, we absolutely appreciate everyone that has ever supported us on Patreon and still continuing to support yes. us. But we also completely understand that, you know, it's really tough right now and everything's kind of unsure or uncertain and whatnot. But, you know, we just we just we love you guys. Like your guys' support really means the world to us. So uh, I believe. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm not too sure. <laughs> I'm actually not super familiar with the Patreon like tiers and whatnot. But um, mm-hmm. I'm I'm really looking forward to to what we have kind of coming up for for our Patreon and whatnot. I think we've yes. got some cool stuff in the works for it, just in general, and that's all I can really say. Yes, um, we have some updates that will hopefully come into effect in the next few months of extra things that we'll be offering and doing for you guys and just Mm -hmm. yeah we can't say too much but we've been having giving you more bang for your buck yeah we're gonna be doing a lot of new things that'll Mm -hmm. be really cool so if you want to join the patreon you can get ahead of the curve before we really start pumping them out like that'd be awesome but yeah just Mm -hmm. pay attention to that yeah definitely (laughs) 
but you know you get you get early access to the comic dubs the ruby goofs the vr shorts ruby abridged the only thing actually that you don't get early access to that's our pre-recorded content is this podcast it's the only thing that doesn't yeah. go on the patreon like early yeah. anyways um yeah but yeah and other things that you should definitely give us a follow on if you can uh twitter we you know we post all of our updates on there you know talk about what conventions we're going to share you know we we've been known to share some some artists on there and whatnot so if you want to see basically anything under the sun that Kruby is up to that's a really good place to to you know keep up to date with all of our stuff i think we actually just hit a thousand followers a thousand followers yeah, yeah so that we was, did that was super cool it was like a thousand three when i actually looked at it and i was like damn it i really wanted yeah. a screenshot <laughs> so r-w-b-y-a-b-r-g mm-hmm. i think that's the twitter yep r-w-b-y-a-b-r-g yes and it's great and awesome and cool and twitter yay yeah and then of course our discord our uh, our public discord i we have links for you guys to join all over the place i think like all of our all of our like facebook posts have them or all of our videos have them in the description come hang out you know we we do uh we do hangouts in the voice channels M- most of us like almost all of us you know are, are regularly pretty chat like pretty chatty in i pop there. in sometimes yeah i come uh, in Katie's, randomly katie's been, <laughs> been known to, to pop in there occasionally and everyone just loses their shit when she types <laughs> everyone's like oh my god is that katie senpai kun <laughs> nani <laughs> But yeah, so those are all the places that you can check us out. And again, thank you so much for your guys' support, especially during this, you know, really trying time. We love you guys. Yeah, thank you. And and please put yourself first. But if you want to join us and have some fun with us, we are here for you guys. We want to entertain you and also give you somewhere to go during this hard time to enjoy some stuff and take a break from reality. Yeah, and Kruby is in this really kind of beautifully unique position where this the isolation and the lockdowns don't really affect our productivity yeah youtubers are actually probably gonna do okay with this yeah it's kind of like huh i have to stay home more cracks knuckles let's do this (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) no but it's it's just funny you know because it's it's interesting because you know watching like um rooster teeth where you know they're they're having to do you know like um they're they're like rt inbox they're not i don't think they're doing from from the office right now they're all self-isolating and it's it's just funny yeah. seeing their like like barb's instagram stories where she's in like a google hangouts with like everyone else and they're all just doing dumb shit on their cameras and whatnot yeah <laughs> and i'm just like man it's literally like us <laughs> it's literally what yes. our production meetings look like i actually saw barbara dunkelman tweet earlier that for always open their podcast that because they're not able to use the studio they might have to record from home and they might record from home and that means that they could have a guest from anywhere in the world so they might do some interesting episodes kind of perpetually ajar style so oh, like, yeah <laughs> we did it first no i'm kidding <laughs> we did it first no <laughs> we love always open and yeah, i am absolutely. just i am just watching my podcast app waiting for a new episode it's just been really interesting seeing how people have been adapting to continuing to make their content do their jobs yeah. but from home there's actually this yeah. really beautiful video and i have to i should share it with you uh katie that they did um it's called it was hashtag voices from home i believe that disney Mm. did and they got a bunch of the dapper dans you know the like barbershop quartet dudes um together and they all filmed themselves singing when you wish upon a star and then they edited it together with like i think there was like 16 of them that were all singing you know like baritone tenor like all of that and it's this really beautiful like i'm getting chills just remembering it because it's such i'm such a disney nerd and um that's so nice yeah it's really cool to like see you know it's like even though they're not able to sing together like they normally would it's really cool to see how they're still able to you know come together and make something that people can enjoy you know yeah so yeah i ended the creepy news corner update like a little while ago but yeah that's yeah (laughs) i'm just like oh my gosh because when you're podcasting sometimes you can just get into any topic and just just it was go all kind it. of relevant like it's been a yeah, while yeah, since yeah. we had a creepy news corner i'm rusty leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> well we hope that you all enjoyed that update and then without further ado let us get into our wisebreakers. breakers as you all know um 
it's rare that we all agree on um, all of the things. And yeah, let's see if we can be 100% unanimous on this on this bit. We've only done it like two or three times out yep. of all two seasons. So let's see if we can crack some knuckles, do it this time. We can do it. We can do it. And comment below your answers. That would be really neat. Yeah. Okay. So would you rather have a sweet or salty snack? So... I have a thing. I don't I don't really care for like salty snacks necessarily. But so yeah. my question, if it's just the two side things, would like french fries and a frosty be considered a snack? Ooh. Because I really love dipping Wendy's fr- french fries into a frosty because it's a combination of sweet and salty. That is true. I I do typically like sweet and salty, but I was going for, like, what do you lean towards here? Because, yes, Frosty and French fries could be a snack, but for here, I want to know what you lean towards. I would say like, sweet then. I would rather have an entirely sweet snack than an entirely salty snack. I get bored of salty snacks really quick. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat, but I do prefer, like, sometimes I'll like to have my cheese puffs with, like, some ice cream. I won't, like, put them in it, but, like, I'll, but I'll eat them, like, kind of side by side, would, like, when I'm watching che- something because I like. Would cheese puffs be salty, though? I feel like they're not salty. Like, if they were, like, well, ruffles, yeah. I guess they're savory, then. Yeah, those are kind of, like, eh, in between. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's fair, that's fair. Or sour, um... What's it called? Um, salt and vinegar chips. I love salt and vinegar chips, and I like to eat them a lot. But I, I like I salt to... and vinegar chips like I like raisin and oatmeal cookies. I I mm-hmm. enjoy them, but I don't like biting into them, expecting them to be Lay's. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if I bite into a, an oatmeal raisin cookie, thinking it's a it's a chocolate chip cookie, I will be very upset and disappointed. <laughs> Oh, yeah. But if I know that it's an oatmeal raisin cookie that I'm biting into, I love them. Same with the, yeah. you know, the salt and vinegar chips is if I know that that's what I'm biting into. Hell yeah, I love them. But if I if I, I you know, if it's really... a bowl and I think that it's mm-hmm. a bowl of normal lays and I take a bite, I'm gonna be really upset. <laughs> No, yeah, and I think that they taste the best when I have, like, a really sweet soda or something with them. Mm -hmm. Like, so when it comes to something that I lean towards, I'm definitely in the sweet camp, too. Like, if there's, like, a Debbie sweet cake around and I can get that with some milk versus if there's a salty snack around, like, I like to have the salty snack, but I need something sweet or something like that to wash it down with. So I lean towards sweet, too. Yeah. Wow. Well, hell yeah. First one down. Look at we're, that. We're in agreement. First one down. Let <laughs> Although, us know in the comments below. Katie, let's be real, though. Frosties, let's be real. like, rule them all, though. Bro, <laughs> I'm like, uh, I wish I could just go back to ALA, too, and, like, get a Frosty and just hang out I in the hotel. I have to show you the, like... the picture that I have, and you've probably seen it, but Annika took a funny picture of you and me and you you know you have uh you have like the wendy's like soda cup like in your hand and oh my it's just, god it's just yes. such a funny photo that because it just really captures the two of us oh god i can't wait to see it <laughs> then cool uh let's go to our next wisebreaker then all right this one's kind of relevant to our times right now <laughs> would you rather never get sick again or never have to sleep and you'd feel 100% energized all the time. Never get sick again. Yeah, I'm also yeah. in that camp. I already don't sleep like nearly as much as I should. So if I didn't have to sleep and actually felt good, hell yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> like, oh wait, so are you going with sick or no I'm sleep? Going, I'm going never get sick again. Okay, yeah, because like... Because never having to sleep again and you feel you don't feel any negative repercussions. You just feel like energized and rested like you feel good. Like that is an interesting thought because like, you know, now when you're missing sleep, it's not that you're sacrificing your well-being or your health. You're just you're going to be healthy and you have so much time to do activities and projects and you're never going to be like too tired to work on something. So your productivity would be awesome. But I think the the reason I would go with never getting sick again is because never having to sleep again would be very isolating because everyone else is going to be sleeping. And I'd rather kind of blend in with their lifestyle already if they're not changing and never be sick again because that way I can be like a normal person like they all are. And, you know, we experience, like, you know, sleep and, like, all that good stuff. And 
but for sickness, I just have like an extra bonus. So I never have to go to the doctor. I never have to worry about dying because of my health. Like, Mm -hmm. and so if I just focus on a nice sleep schedule, I'm never going to have to pay for a doctor's visit again. I'm never going to have to, you know, et cetera. Like, I don't have to worry about if my friend is sick and they want company, like I can be there because I'm not going to get sick. Like if they have the virus, I can be there for them. Like, like I think that it actually would be something to help me in my everyday life, but also help me get closer to people too. Maybe. Yeah. I like that answer. That's good. I'm yeah. I'm more of just very simple. Like I said, I are I have really bad insomnia. I've been having a horrible time sleeping because of the stress of everything going on lately. Um yeah. so if being able to just continue to do that uh, but actually feel good, that I I would love that. But um I I would rather never get sick again because I feel like that kind of covers a lot of things. So you wouldn't oh, necessarily yeah. you wouldn't necessarily feel ill because you you're not sleeping well because that can adversely affect your health and make you ill. Um mm-hmm. so it's kind of it's kind of almost they're kind of all they go hand in hand really well. Yeah, yeah. But I I I would still say never have to get sick again. That would be oh, yeah. that would be most ideal. Most ideal. Then cool. They make we you are really good. They make you a really good low. person to like work in like the health industry. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Like work as like a, a nurse or a doctor because you would never be able like you could go into like contaminated zones or like quarantine mm-hmm. zones and never get like ill from it. You know? Yeah. Honestly, being not not having to sleep and still being at one hundred percent would also be really good for the medical field because like you know, those late night calls and you don't have to worry about like, oh, I just did this surgery and I I need to rest. Nope, I'm good. Another surgery? Let's do it. Like Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, the not getting sick. That's wow. that would be a dream. That's two for two, Katie. We did it. Whoa. Okay. Final one. Okay, this one I have a feeling we're gonna agree and and get a, a three for three, but We'll see. Would you rather be able to always get the joke or any animal that you meet will let you pet it? So will I be allowed to pet any animal I meet? I mean, allowed if you're implying that, like, you know, somebody owns this dog and, like, they won't let you, that then no, you probably couldn't because, like, that the owner is, like, not letting you touch so, like, the dog. I but just want to any... tell your dog that they are valid and I love them. That's all. <laughs> but <sighs> any animal that you encounter, any animal will not like attack you or bite you or anything like that. Like they will be like, please pet me. Like they want you to pet them. So you would never have to worry about, oh God, is this animal going to hurt me? Like, nope, it will let you pet it. Mm, yeah, I think I'm still going to go with animal. Because, um, oh, and just to just to clarify, too, that um, it doesn't mean that, like, you'll be able to, like, tame it and ride it into the sunset and, like, you know, make it, like, yours, like, all this stuff. But, like, it will let you it will let you pet it and peacefully go on your way. Like, yeah. Yeah. I would like to be able to wow. to pet You're, any animal. Then we are in disagreement because I would rather always get the joke. Wow. Really? Yeah. Because. I find myself in more social situations than wild animal situations, and I'd like to keep it that way. Even if I had that power, I just don't think I... I mean, I'm in more situations that I enjoy when it comes to jokes, and and I think that that feeling of when I'm in a situation and someone says a joke and I don't get it, and I'm like, "Uh, yeah, what was the joke? Like, I think that would help me not only as a writer, but as just like just a person out in the world like we we really can come together through humor sometimes and i think that that would help me into a lot of people's minds if they tell a joke and i automatically am able to fully understand it even if it's a joke that isn't in a context that i'm usually familiar with like that would that would be really awesome like i would learn a lot and i'd always get to laugh laughing is one of my favorite things so like i'd always have a new source of laughter if someone tells a joke like i don't have to worry about like Because I usually do get the joke, like, most of the time. But there have been times where, like, it took me a minute. And so, yeah, I would very much like to to never not get a joke again. (laughs) That's that's fair. No, that's that's completely fair. I'm I I agree with you. Like, I, I, I get that. But I I really would love to be able to just be like, hello, Mr. Bear. Have a good one. (laughs) 
Or like a bird comes by and you can be like, I'm going to pet An that actual pigeon and everybody Disney will be princess. Like, Yes, I'm not. Like, I'm not normally it. super feminine, but if I'm ever given the chance to be an actual fucking Disney princess, I fucking will. <laughs> <laughs> I would. That's my number one birds. dream. There is uh, to be a Disney princess. <laughs> that is amazing. That's that's so valid. <laughs> Well, well, damn, we got a two out of three. Two out of three. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's. Yeah. I feel like that's more than we usually agree on. I think we've we've gotten a lot of two out of threes, but but it's definitely like we definitely had a lot of. Well, one I mean, out of we three usually two. get a lot of like two out of three. We like will like agree on one, but then disagree on two. But like as yeah, far yeah, as like yeah. agreeing on two, I feel like we don't usually at least not in a row. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, Someone, well, someone's got to go through yes. and like tally all of these. How many times we've Honestly, agreed yeah. from every episode? How many times have we agreed? Just in general, <laughs> we should have we should have kept like a, a count. Damn. Oh well, <laughs> missed opportunity. Maybe Sugar Rush. <laughs> sugar Rush. <laughs> we see you in the comments, Sugar Rush. We love you. <laughs> sugar all Rush right. was in my was in my chat uh, last night while I was streaming. Oh, nice. Yeah. Our fan question is actually from Sugar Rush today, Hell but we will yeah. get to that later. Spoilers. Uh, let us get to our ba-da-da-da-da winter view questions. Okay. So, Bo, mm. what is something that you wish you did, but you don't? And what I mean by that is not something that, like, is in the past that you wish you could change, but, like, something that in your everyday life, you know, maybe you wish that you did more of or that you would start doing but you just haven't yet or you just aren't doing it cleaning my fucking room <laughs> oh shit Go <laughs> this off. is a call out post Bo. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> someone in the comments tell me to clean my room because i probably still won't have cleaned my room by the time this episode comes out um clean your room <laughs> no katie you don't tell me what to do <laughs> damn it <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, no, for reals though. Like, I'm I'm really really bad about about cleaning up and like like tidying up more so. Like cleaning up makes it sound like it's like dirty, more so yeah. tidying up. Um, I I wish I I just I really lack a lot of motivation when it comes to stuff like that, and yeah. it's been especially with like everything that's going on, depression really kind of being at a, an all-time high for the first time in a very long time it's just really hard for me to be motivated to do stuff like that because it's kind of like no one comes here anyways no one's going to be coming here anytime soon yeah and it's kind of like i don't necessarily need for it to be presentable but i really i really should so i wish i wish that i cleaned my room but i don't <laughs> well, all right what about you katie uh, something that I wish I was doing more. Remember, we got a both um, answer. Yeah, that this is true. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, one thing I had wished for a while that I was doing was like counting my calories and drinking more water. And I have been consistently doing that. But one thing that I wish I would consistently, consistently do that I've tried, but I keep falling off of is with my exercising with my weights. I wish that I did that every day. And I was doing good on cardio, but then when the quarantine was happening, the place that I went to to exercise is kind of not available right now. And so that kind of sucks. And I'm kind of sad about that. But I wish that every day I was exercising. And and these are changes that, you know, hypothetically, I, I could make happen. Like today, I can just say, you know what, I'm going to do it. And I've done that a few times, but then I kind of fall off of it. But I have been good about my food and water, like, and my sleep. Like, I've been on top of that. So I just need to get exercise back in there. Fair enough. Yeah, that is where I'm at. Well, all right, what is one of your winter view questions? Katie. Yes. What is one thing that you are deeply proud of in your life. Hmm. And you can you can interpret that however you want. Something that when you think about it and it applies to you, you it brings you great pride. I pride myself on and this is going to kind of go into a, I guess a vanity place because you know this is me talking about something that I really like about myself that I do. But treat yourself whenever whenever I meet someone or 
am having a conversation with someone, with a friend, I pride myself on being the type of person that is very engaged and present. And, like, I hope that I make people feel heard and feel comfortable when talking to me. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, maybe that isn't always the case. But in more situations than not, I find that people that I'm talking to will open up to me or that they will feel like they can talk to me and that when I'm in a conversation, I can feel like we're both there or at the very least that I am there, <clears throat> bleh, that I am there and that they feel heard and like they can say whatever they need to say. And that is something that I I pride myself on and you know I'm not perfect like there's definitely very outlier situations but there are people that I have not been able to do that with and it sucks when it happens Mm -hmm. but more often than not I'm able to do that and that is something that makes me very happy and has actually set some foundations for some really awesome relationships that I'm so lucky to have now And that I'm able to go into those relationships and have conversations that feel just so easy. Mm -hmm. And that's not something that I want to take for granted. And so I I pride myself and I feel very prideful about the fact that I have been able to to do that. And I hope that I can continue to do that. What a good answer. That was a good answer. It makes me happy. (laughs) And that's why I like podcasting, I guess, because it just (laughs) gives me a time to like be in the moment and just talk (laughs) yeah definitely I think for me um, yeah what about you something that I'm really proud of in my life is also kind of more like it's it's something I I wouldn't consider it vain I wouldn't consider yours vain um but it's still something that I'm proud of because it took a very long time for me to get to that point um is being being true to myself like not being afraid to admit who I am, you know, yeah. to not not being not feeling like not feeling like I have to hide who I am because of expectations or whatever have you. Like if I've finally gotten to the point where, you know, if I if I introduce myself and I'm like, hi, my name's Bo. I'm non-binary. I go by they them you know, and uh, this is what I do, and someone has an opinion about it, like, I honestly genuinely don't care. Like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be a bigot, I don't care what you have to think about me. (laughs) Like, and it's taken, it's taken a very long time to get to that point. I am super insanely protective of other people like myself, though, you know, of of my community, Mm -hmm. of the trans community, of the LGBTQIA plus community, I'm very protective of of anyone that has been subjected to bullying or could potentially be subjected to bullying. But um, f- as as for myself, I feel like I've finally gotten to a point where bullies just don't have any power over me anymore. Yeah. And I'm really proud of that because that was something that took me a very long time to be able to to figure out how to not... How to take that power from them. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> that's my answer. That's really awesome. Yeah. That's that's really nice. And I think that's a really good answer. And just it really shows how strong communities are and that those really are what make us feel our most powerful, I think, is when you have others, when you have allies, people that show you that you're not crazy for being or seeing things the way that you see them or being the way that you are or not taking it if someone is going to give you shit or someone's going to try to invalidate you like like having people that support you and back you up having a support system is so important mm-hmm. absolutely all right next winter view question yeah. um what is something that no one knows about you publicly Bo? if there's something you're willing to share oh boy okay um I'm going to go with something that no one knows. Well, I mean, people fr- who knew me back then, but I don't have any of those people in my life anymore. Um, yeah, so that's yeah, yeah. why I say, like, you know, no one knows it publicly. Um, but 
it's something that no one in my life currently knows about me that I know of. Um, and it's something that I'm really embarrassed to admit, but I'll go ahead and, and get it out on this one. It's probably not at all what you think it's going to be. But okay. for the longest time, I was so in love with and had the hugest crush on Hayden Christensen, the actor oh. that plays Anakin Skywalker in the uh, in Star Wars uh, uh, Attack of the Clones mm. and Revenge of the Sith. I had the biggest crush on him back when I thought I was straight. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, that was he. He just I don't know what it was, but that was he was my boy for the longest time. That is amazing. Yep. That's all I have. That's all I'm willing to share on the matter. <laughs> um, okay, what about you, something? Katie? I'm trying to think. because I Because I talk a lot. And like, I have another podcast that I've shared probably too much on. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I've told some very intimate stories on that podcast. <laughs> uh, go check it out. Weird Flex Spooky Podcast. Wow. Um, what but... is with the self-promotion <laughs> Bullshit. Hey, man, I'm just trying to feel valid today, okay? I'm just out here hustling. This episode okay, should be called Shameless Plug, God. Shameless Plug the episode. Oh, no, if you really want me to shameless plug, <laughs> no. cracks knuckles. But, okay, no. Um, something, <laughs> no one, something no one knows about me publicly, so it's not something to plug, something no one knows. Um, I, I mean, you can plug it if you want, but, like, <laughs> I don't know what good it's going to do if no one knows about it. If no one knows about it, uh, my new <laughs> side hustle, uh, the butt blow for Blow dryer. Um, okay. she, she rides the unicycle and plays the bagpipes. <laughs> I do. No, I wish. That would be an interesting combination. And wears a Darth Vader um, helmet. <laughs> something, 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 something. I'm trying to think, because I'm typically pretty much an open book. Uh, um, ooh. I have one that I could share, and I guess... You know what? Yeah, I'm just going to say something that's kind of a little deep, I guess, that I've never said publicly okay um my ex-boyfriend um i've talked about my ex-boyfriend on my other podcast and i and maybe i've vaguely mentioned it on this podcast but i've never said his name um publicly because i never in terms of like in a public setting i've never talked about it and name dropped him like because you know back in the day people knew we were dating but um so it's not like that, but um, I've never, like, said this publicly after the fact, but, um, and I won't go into too many details, but my ex-boyfriend is uh, Xander Mobus, and uh, we dated for two years, and he is the Smash announcer um, for Super Smash Brothers, and yeah, we were together for two years, and it was a very heartbreaking time in my life when uh, we broke up, and it was really hard, and... Um, there's a whole story there and, you know, there's a lot to be said, but that relationship honestly made me stronger and dating in the entertainment world was something that taught me a lot about people and about myself and about life and, and how afraid I was to talk about who I was dating out of the fear of someone assuming that I don't work hard or that, oh, I'm just trying to be with a person and then they're gonna make me famous like blah blah blah. because someone said to me once like when they heard that I was dating him like oh well you just want to be famous right and that I do not talk to that person anymore it fucking infuriated me that someone yeah. would think that the work that I do is because of some fucking man in my life and that that that's the only reason that I'm able to do what I fucking do fuck that person just it just I've never talked about this publicly because I was always afraid of looking like someone that is only with, like, someone to see what I can gain from them. Because anyone that knows me knows that that's not who I am. And in our latest um, VR short, that's actually that actually comes out a little bit in some of the writing that I did. I kind of self... Um, projected? Whatever the word is. I kind of projected a little bit with Pira some of the feelings that I had about a falling out that I had with someone in my life that not the ex-boyfriend, but a friend that frankly was very disrespectful and rude to me. And honestly, when I look at our friendship felt like they never really 
saw me as an equal and that they only saw me as someone that is friends with people that they wish they were friends with. And like, and I hate saying it like that. I hate putting that negativity out into the world. And, but I feel like sometimes you just have to admit that and say, you have to say that out loud. And I'm not going to name that person, but yeah, just. You're allowed to be angry. You're allowed to, to feel negative emotions, yeah, you know? Like, I know. It's just saying it on a podcast though, like, you know, but I'm, I'm becoming more, I feel a lot stronger now about the person that I am and that I know what my values and my morals are and the the work that I do and the fact that I fucking earned it. Like I've the places that I am and the things that I've done and the people I've met and seen and the relationships I've made are not because one time I had a boyfriend that knew people like that's not how that works. But there are people out there that think that way. And like there are people in industries that like, you know, maybe do that. And that's it sucks that being a woman in the entertainment industry, sometimes you're looked at as, oh, I want to sleep with this person or, oh, like they've clearly only gotten where they are because they slept to the top or because they this or that or that. And that thought always infuriated me. And like there was a gig that I booked recently that I worked my ass off for. And when they emailed me saying that I booked the gig, it wasn't because they knew who I was friends with. It wasn't because they knew any of the shit they said no your audition was the best and that was the most pride that I felt in a long time because that is something I always strive to do is no one is truly self-made and that everyone needs help along the way that is a fact everyone needs people in their life to support them you need connections you need that is a matter of the industry and just life you're not going to be 100% self-made but when someone tries to tell you that someone that you deeply loved the only reason that you were with them at all was for some vain excuse for fame or something and just tries to sum up your relationship when they don't know you. It's just, that's how the internet can be sometimes and that's how people can be sometimes and you don't need people like that in your life. You have to be yourself. You have to do what you know is right. And and I'm still kind of recovering and accepting the fact that people are going to think that about me or say that about me. When I was even in the relationship with him, there would be people that would, or after we broke up, there was one time I got invited to a party where someone, we were all playing Smash, and someone said to me like, hey, why don't you tell everybody about your connection with this game, Katie? And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm not in this game. And they were like, no, but that person that you know, I don't want to talk about that. Like, they were trying to use the fact that my ex-boyfriend was someone involved with this video game to try to brag about it, that they knew me, that they were my ex-boyfriend. And it's like, do you know how much that hurts yeah. to have your your love life put on a fucking prop? Like, hey, look at this interesting thing. Like, like they only invited me to this party to talk about the fact that I'm fucking heartbroken over someone that you think is cool. <laughs> yeah, that's really great. <laughs> yeah. That's really funny. I don't talk to that person either. It's just... Got to cut that toxicity out of your life. Yeah, and so that's something I've never talked about publicly is the fact that in the entertainment world, and, you know, if you're dating an actor, if you are an actor, if, you know, all this stuff, do whatever the fuck you want. Live your life and date who you want. Sleep with who you want. And if someone wants to tell you that you're doing it for whatever reason, fuck them. Do whatever you fucking want. I'm honestly really happy that I'm not dating an actor anymore, though, because it... it that's a that's a whole other conversation. Like I'm an actor. I love acting and actors are great. And my boyfriend right now has nothing to do with acting. And I'm so happy about that, like that he has his passions and interests that are totally separate from mine and that we can bond and share that. And I think that my time with my ex-boyfriend was wonderful and he he was great. And, you know, all the good stuff. And and we had a lot we could learn from each other, like entertainers, dating entertainers can have its its ups but it's more just about the person it's not about what they do it's not about like what job they have or whatever it's about the person and if they can be with your lifestyle and 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 what you need emotionally and physically and like mentally like you need to be with someone that's for you and and if someone tries to speculate about your relationship without talking to you first fuck those people and I just wanted to share that because that's something that's kind of I've been afraid to talk about because I don't want to seem like, oh, I'm name dropping or blah, 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 blah. But it's like, fuck it. Like, 
it's your life, it's your life. And if you want to share your life, share your life. And if anyone tries to say that you're doing it for whatever reasons, they don't know you. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. And I feel a little stronger having said that out loud now. Well, thank you so much for sharing that, Katie, like genuinely. And I don't I don't say this. Um, anyone that's really close to me um, knows that I don't do this very often, but I love you, Katie. Like genuinely, you are one of the strongest people that I know. So Aww. that I really appreciate you sharing that with me and with our people listening. It really means a yeah. lot. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. It's yeah, because I think one thing I love about podcasting, and when I listen to podcasts, I want to hear people talk about the real shit. Mm-hmm. I want people to tell me things that I can relate to. Like I love always open because they get real, mm-hmm. and and I get so inspired by like Barbara Dunkelman and like them when they talk about like their relationships and like all the stuff in their life that usually people would be too scared to like say or talk about because they don't want people to think this or that about them. But like it helps to listen to their stories and just get perspectives on things and like realize you're not alone in whatever you're going through. And I just I'm tired of hiding aspects about myself for the sake of someone else and not for me, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, if I don't want to share something because I don't want to share it. Cool. That's totally OK. Yeah. But I kept having this feeling that I didn't want to share it because I was afraid of what other people thought about me more so than just keeping it private. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck that. Like, I'm going to share this part of my life, not because like anyone necessarily needs to know. It is no one's business. But if I want to share it, fuck what people think about me. Retake, it's my life. Retake it's that, what, that it's what control. Happens. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And just, yeah, I just wanted to talk about that. <laughs> well, awesome. Thank you for that. That was, man, that's better than <laughs> any answer that I could have said out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it just like, it just hit me randomly. Like, you know what? Cracks knuckles. I'm going to drop some shit right now. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, well, all right. Let's get to our last uh, interview question. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so this one, you know, I'm... I'm going to, like, give some specifics on it. The question is, what is a dream that you've never said out loud? Um, But I want to actually go with the literal sense of not necessarily like, oh, a dream job that I've aspired for but never told anyone. I want to know a dream that you've had, like sleeping, an actual dream that you've never shared with anyone. Well, the thing is that I forget my dreams a lot of the time. If it's a daydream, I have a lot of daydreams. <laughs> but if it's like, I mean, you know, actual sleeping. <laughs> okay, then maybe I can share a daydream because I'm not going to lie. I don't remember the I, dreams that I I've... actually only have one dream that I remember, and it's the dream that I'm going to share. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, then I'll just share like a daydream. Um, all right, this is perpetually ajar. We are a parody of Always Open, and Always Open is a very, like, you know, not so for work kind of podcast. We try to keep it a little in between, but all right, so. <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> Disclaimer. If, if this um, isn't your cup of tea, skip ahead like five minutes. <laughs> skip ahead like five, maybe two minutes. I, I'm going to keep it super brief. So, okay. And obviously, go. I'm a, I'm a heck. I'm a hecking weeb, and I, back in the day, would write a lot of fanfic, and, like, you know, I, I'm just a normal, you know, hormone-filled human that is perfectly normal. Humans are sexual beings. We are allowed to I experience— I see where this is going. <laughs> you know, all of the good things, and um, there's a lot of anime characters that I love very much, very, very much, and— um, Oh, no. <laughs> And, like, it's not, like, the biggest secret because, again, like, I know I keep bringing up my other podcast, but we talk about very not safe for work things on my other podcast. We, gotta, like, we get very... got to be a... got to <laughs> pop the cherry on perpetually a jar. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so one time... Um, I'll just tell one of them because there are many. There are many. <laughs> okay. I'm a normal person. There are many. But growing up, I wrote a lot of fan fictions about um, Naruto characters, like Naruto truth or dares and stuff. And um, and I really hecking loved Daydara from Naruto. And he has mouths on his hands. And, um, and I had a lot of daydreams all throughout, like, fucking middle school and high school just about me and Daydara being ninjas out in the world and having a lot of the sex.tm and a lot of interesting things happening in the forest. And I'm not going to, like, go in description, like, 
all that good stuff. But um, yeah, so I had a lot of sexy dreams about Daydara, and uh, we were in love, and we fucked a lot. <laughs> oh, man. I feel like I should change mine to a daydream, too, just so that, that way... <laughs> That way it's it's equal because like I I said something kind of dumb for my what's you you've never said out loud and you said something really profound and then you're you're sharing some really great things some gems here <laughs> and uh, oh I have to think for a second then something of similar quality I'm a connoisseur of weird ass daydreams. Okay. Um I mean it really shouldn't be any any surprise, but um uh I I back when um Assassin's Creed Odyssey first came out. Yeah. Um the main female player character Cassandra um is this is this very very buff uh Spartan woman. Um mm-hmm. and she's like 7 feet tall. And I have, you know, as as asexual as I am, I have definitely had the the sexy TM daydreams and dreams uh, about Cassandra. <laughs> um, she's uh, she's quite the waifu, let me tell you. So waifu for waifu, hell yeah, yeah. My my dumb one was gonna be that I had a dream that I went to Batman's house once, and by Batman's house it was like a, a trailer that just had a lot of Batman, like old eighties and like fifties oh Batman God. memorabilia. But when I was little, I called it Batman's house. And that is awesome. Yeah. So that's that was the other dream, but <laughs> yeah, you get you oh, get my great. story about the Mystheos Cassandra. Oh my God, that's so, so great. It's it's warm in here. <laughs> I just got a little little heated in here. I'm My a fan sweaty. is off, uh-huh. otherwise it makes a lot of noise, okay? No, that's fair. Don't well, all right, me. then without further ado, because this podcast is getting very long, let's get to our fan question and then we will wrap things up. All right. So this comes from Sugar Rush and they just want to know, what's it like making VR shorts and what's something that you want to do to improve them? Ooh. And it's very relevant because we just released da 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 Winter Holiday Special. Yeah, <laughs> Nondescript Winter Holiday 2. Um, mm-hmm. Well, as the lead director of the VR shorts, um, <laughs> let me just uh, open up my, my notebook here of things that I would rather do right for the VR shorts. Um, I, I know that the goal is to eventually, like, the long-term goal would be to fully animate uh the vr shorts yeah. essentially um so that'd be really cool i as far as the vr sh- shorts go i'm not sure how feasible it is or how how in our capability it is for us but i would just really like to be able to do more with facial expressions and have them be more yeah. fluid rather than you know it it being tied to like a gesture and then having it be like, oh, neutral face, straight into huge smile, you know, like they're really kind of blocky in the VR shorts. And yeah, first and foremost, I think that if we could really sell, you know, with Nondescript 2, we did a really good job finally at tricking the camera and making these characters really feel like they're moving around a scene and like walking out of a room, walking into a room, you know, yeah. and it, that's the most like I feel like alive and interactive the characters have ever been with like the world around them and so yeah. taking it in the next step would be to have the characters be much more realistically expressive I think yeah yeah that's what I would like to do okay yeah. and then yeah in terms of making VR shorts like Bo you know really takes the charge on that but in my part of the process like the writing like for that first script I just I just love writing so it's super fun and getting to see like the updates and like seeing like how far it's come and honestly just being so proud and supportive of the people that are pulling it all together from our editors from uh, from our editors to camera operators to our audio people like ev- seeing everyone's like commitment and like oh my gosh I think one of my favorite parts is seeing like the little uh concept art for like the silly little things we want to include in the episode, like mm-hmm. a snowman or like something funny, like poor snowman. That's Oz. one of my favorite parts. <laughs> I know, rip in peace, ripperoni. But yeah, that's that's some of my favorite parts. 
Awesome. Well, thank you, Sugar Rush, our number one fan, uh, for that question. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> we well, got we gotta do something for Sugar Rush someday. <laughs> like if they're ever at a con with us, like that'd be cool. Yeah. Hell yeah. Then we did it, guys. We made a podcast. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Where can they find you, Bo? Well, you guys can find me at uh, on Twitter, uh, at Bo from Kirby, B-E-A-U-F-R-O-M-K-R-W-B-Y. You can find me on Twitch, where I literally stream essentially full time. Um, it's it's 10 a.m. and I actually just came off of a, an eight and a half hour stream. So, you know, that goes to show you what life I have. Uh, and that's uh, CB Cosplay, so twitch.tv forward slash CB Cosplay. Um, and then, of course, my Discord server, the Crimson Raiders. Uh, you can get the invite link off of my Twitter and also off of my Twitch, I believe. And then as far as projects I want to plug, it's out. It's there for you guys to watch. Please, please, please watch Nondescript Winter Holiday 2. Comment. Let us know what some of your favorite moments were. Let us know, you know, what your your expectations were. You know, what, you know, things that you love, things that maybe you didn't like. You know, give us some of your your feedback. I would love to hear what you guys would think. However, I will, I will be very very big sad if i see any comments about nondescript winter holiday (laughs) three but katie where can they find you all right you can find me at uh on twitter connie day official on like the instagram and the facebook just connie day k-a-n-i-d-a-y on youtube i have like a few song covers and some now voice this entries that i did uh connie day but my twitter is mostly where like all of my dumb shit is. So Connie Day official. And then, of course, you can find me at the Weird Flex But Okay podcast. We have a Twitter Weird Flex pod and a Patreon for Weird Flex But Okay podcast as well, where we have a little bit of bonus content. And we also have some um, really neat little like posts that we do every now and then. But the podcast is completely free on iTunes and SoundCloud. So look it up if you want. It gets a little more not safe for work sometimes. And it's it's very fun <laughs> and very <laughs> silly. And um Uh, You can also find me at Dr. Crafty on YouTube, where I am a writer and a voice actress. And um, I'm just I actually just got done writing like quite a few scripts for the new season. And it's going to be really great. And I'm going to be recording for that soon. And yes, you can also find me, of course, on Kruby Productions, K-R-W-B-Y Productions, which you're listening to our podcast right now. So you obviously found us. Yay. (laughs) And you can find us, of course, on Twitter at R-W-B-Y-A-B-R-G. You can find us on Patreon at Kruby Productions. You can find us on YouTube. Watch all of our content. And that is a wrap. Hell yeah. Is, what should we name the episode, Bo? <laughs> I, I still say either shameless plug or good day bidet. Good day bidet? <laughs> oh my god. That's it. No, butt blow dryer. <gasps> no, I'm worried about I'm worried about having butt in the title. YouTube might not like Damn it, that. you're right. So Okay. Um Good day bidet. <laughs> oh my god. I wanted to say it earlier and I didn't because I just was like, no, but all right, guys, that's we did it. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you so Good much. Good night. Good night. San Diego. Stay, stay safe. Wash your hands. We Wash love your hands. You. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.